not a hand that I can pursue anymore. It's like yeah. Bill discussing the hand with his coach, Jeff Gross. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. One of these times I'm going to ship it. Perkins with 10 8 off suit. And this won't be the time he ships it. Pocket nines for Jason Mercier. And he's going to open up the action by raising to 2,400 min raise. Over to Haxton. He's got queen 10 off suit. Now, Ike on the button is going to play a relatively wide range of hands. He's going to feel very confident in his post flop ability. And queen 10 off, not the best hand in the world. I think Ike was probably thinking about either three betting or calling there and elects just to call. A couple of threes for Jeff Gross. I personally like three betting with a hand like queen 10 off, maybe just calling with queen 10 suited, but Ike elected to just call and see a flop here. Three way and jack nine eight with a couple of clubs. Jason Mercier has flop middle set and Ike Haxton has the nut straight. Jeff Gross also involved, making it a three-way pot. His pocket threes should see an easy exit if there's any action at this point. Yeah, this is just a huge cooler here. And Jason decides to check. My guess is that he's looking for Ike to bet so he can put in a check raise. And Ike, of course, is going to indulge, betting 7,000. Yeah, I don't think he was expecting Ike to have a better hand, though. Easy muck for Gross, and it's back over to Mercier on this highly textured flop. Yeah, this is a really dangerous board. Mercier has check raised it to 19,500 total. Now we'll see if Ike decides to just call or to put even more aggression. My guess is that Ike doesn't expect Jason to be check raising very light here, so he'll probably put another raise in and try to get stacks in. Indeed he does, 52,000 total now. Yeah, and there's not really much for Jason to do. He has to ship it in with middle set. On. All in. And that's exactly what he does. Go. Ike says call, rather nonchalantly, with the nuts, and Mercier has a look of concern. Yeah, you could see on his face when he went all in, he looked at Ike to see how quickly he would call because there was definitely at least a possibility that he was beat. Well, the trapper became the trappee. I almost just called to him. An absolutely massive pot here. Ike has over 100 big blinds and just a an really unfortunate cooler for Jason. Things were going so well for him, and now it looks like he might lose a huge pot. No help to a set of nines on the turn. 290,400 chips in the middle. Mercier needs the board to pair, and it does. Look wow, at this. Wow, look at that. And Ike, just like that, has busted from the tournament. <sighs> All right, rebuy time. Well, not quite. Apparently, he's ready for a second bullet, my friends. All right. Hey, buddy. Jason, absolutely crushing the tournament at this point. Yeah, you're obviously pretty well to do. All right, back <laughs> to the hand. Leaf force goes away. Ryan Hughes now with a 9-8 has raised. Makes it 23,000 to go. And he raised the last hand with six high, raises this time with nine high. It's been folded around to Pat Mahoney, who has a queen ten of spades. Well, Pat's on the short stack here at this final table, so he knows he's going to make something happen, so he's going to call here. Oh, and a good thing he did is it comes queen ten deuce. Pat's got the top two pair, but notice that Ryan has a straight draw and a flush draw. So one has a big hand, the other has a big drawing hand. Good see fireworks. Oh, incredible. Yep, Ryan has bet. Pat's coming back over the top, makes it 68,000. And a re-raise there by Ryan. Well, Vance, both players have a hand to get all the money in with, that's for sure. I'm all in. Oh. Oh. And there you go. All in, call, Mike. Up top two. Well, you can't blame either one of them with these hands for getting the money in there. Pat Mahoney winces. His life on the line right now, but he is out in front with queens and tens. What an amazing hand. Well, the two-time bracelet winner at the World Series of Poker, Ryan Hughes, looking for a diamond or a jack right now. And hits the jack oh. of diamonds on the turn. Well, Pat Mahoney up against it now. He ran cross country and track in college at North Dakota. Ten of diamonds. And right now, if he doesn't catch a queen or a ten, it's not the ten of diamonds. He's going to be running out of here in sixth place. Yes! Oh, he's done it. He did it. A queen comes off. He's made the full house to stay alive. That is ridiculous. The crowd can't believe it. What drama there. Great flop for both players. Ryan hits his flush on the turn. His opponent makes the full house on the river. And there is a seesaw battle of emotions, folks, right there. Ace five suited for Jason Mercier. He was born in Port Charlotte, Florida, just 28 years old. And he's managed to rack up $13.7 million in live tournament earnings. Much of that courtesy of his eight career WPT caches, a former player of the year. 
Schindler with King Nine Suited makes the call. Now the fact that Jason, uh, we haven't seen him play a lot of pots, is this maybe a little more liberal call than Jake should be making with King Nine Suited? I don't think Jason not playing hands is too indicative of anything besides just not really getting good cards. It's it's a little bit of a loose call, but I don't think it's completely unreasonable. Well, they ended up picking up the small blind of Noah Schwartz and the big blind of Bryn Kenny. The flop, ace, ace, three with two clubs. Noah Schwartz with the best hand, trip aces and a ten kicker. Jason Mercier with ace, five, also trip aces but out kick. And Jake Schindler with the flush draw. Yeah, definitely going to create some action here as Jake has the flush draw and both Jason and Noah have three aces. Two checks in front of Mercier who bets 2100. Jake not going to go anywhere with his king high flush draw, especially in position against the original Razor. Action on Jake. Jake makes the call. Now Noah sitting here with three aces and a pretty good kicker. Pretty interesting to have so much action in front of him. And he's just calling, wary of perhaps being outkicked himself? Both that and just willing to see how the hand plays out. Seven of spades on the turn. Schwartz checks again. You do take a chance here if you're Noah to just have the turn go check, check, check and give a free river card, but Jason deciding to bet here. I think it's an interesting spot for Jason. I mean, once he gets called twice, I think he can credibly assume that somebody has at least a pocket pair and then a flush draw, but it's very possible someone has another ace, and if they do, the kicker is likely to be better than the five. Yeah, Schindler lays down the flush draw after the bet of 6,700, down to heads up after Schwartz makes the call. And here comes the river. It's another seven. These two are going to chop. Very lucky card for Jason, obviously, now that we know um, both hands. Now they both have aces full of sevens. And I shouldn't say they're going to chop because obviously the action could change that if somebody folds. And we see Schwartz betting a very peculiar 5K into a pot of 24-5 oh. and Mercier jumps all over it, moving all in. Yeah, kind of a silly bet from Noah. I'm not sure why he did that. Jason putting some pressure on Noah. I mean, I can't imagine Noah ever folding this hand. It's just, you're just never going to fold. I mean, the only thing you lose to is quad sevens and it's just too unlikely. So a little bit of uh, unnecessary... Theatrics. Theatrics, yeah, exactly. Didn't lay it down. <laughs> nice river fish. <laughs> Little deadpan humor here from the table. Nice river fish. How do you call there? Just not worried about quads at all. I mean, I'm worried, but I got a hundred ball in my bag. Action on Paul Volpe. Great online professional player. Made a lot of money this time. He's got king ten of clubs. And he will raise. Makes it 240 to go. Canadian oh. Paul clan goes out. Well, we're under the small blind here where Jesse looks down at Queen Jack of Clubs. He's going to make the call and see a flop. Certainly yeah, is. Danny Fuse from San Diego. Tough cash game play with a 9. That's eight. only going to cost him a half a bet, Vince. 800,000. That's nearly 700,000 in the pot. He's getting priced in to call here. So we have three way action going. Look at this flop. Three clubs on the flop. Two guys have flushes. Well, it's what we call a cooler flop here. Both players have flushes, and Danny's got top pair. Incredible. Jesse with the queen high flush. He thinks he's in a beautiful place, but he's not. He's going to bet. Definitely going to spell doom for somebody. 280. Danny goes out. Just a good lay down there by Danny Fuse, though. And there, you look at it, you can't believe it. And only one hand can beat you, the ace high flush. Yes, okay. You wouldn't expect a guy to lead out with that hand. Just calls it. Okie dokies. Okay, now looking at Jesse's chip stack indicator, even if he gets it all in, which it looks like he will, Jesse will not bust out since he's in better chip position than Paul. Three of diamonds. On the turn. Incredible. Again, Jesse's going to bet 320. Well, that's a small bet into a $1.3 million pot, but obviously he doesn't think he wants his opponent to go anywhere, and I can assure you he's not. Cool. He's going all in and a snap call by Jesse. Jesse, the local, completely disappointed. Puts the chips into the Volpe fly trap, and he cannot believe it. It's just a cooler hand, flush over flush. Paul Volpe going to double up here and get himself back into good contention to win this title. And the crowd is stunned. The crowd is for Jesse. He's the local, and they realize what a horrible beat he just had. Last card. Just doesn't matter. 
Queen of Spades are on the river, irrelevant. Paul Volpe, the online champ.